Hello world, I'm Benjamin, and this is Source Decoded. Welcome back to another installment of JavaScript is Easy. Today we're going to keep talking about functions. In the last video, I showed you one way to define a function. And it looks something like this. We have the word function, takes a parameter, it's got a body, and all of this gets assigned to a const called multiply by two. And then later we can invoke multiply by two by adding the parentheses and passing in a parameter. This is called the function expression syntax because this right here is an expression. It's a piece of code that gets turned into a value. That value then gets assigned to multiply by two, which can be invoked later. Now there's another way to define a function that's called the function declaration syntax. And that looks like this. Now we've shuffled things up a little bit. Function comes first, then the name of the function, then everything else after here is the same. We've got the parameters and then the function body. Now the name of the function is multiplied by three, so later we can invoke it with parentheses, just like before, multiply by three, two gives us six. The function declaration is not an expression, it's actually a statement or some instruction to JavaScript. And what we're saying here is I declare that there shall be a function named multiply by three. It will take a parameter number and then do this stuff. In most ways, the function declaration and the function expression are the same, but there is one important difference, and that is that function declarations get hoisted. That's a nerd word for when JavaScript reads through the file, it's going to find all of the declarations and then lift them to the top of the scope they're in, usually to the top of the file. And what that means is that it can look like a function is used or invoked before it's actually defined. Let's see what that looks like. So here I've got a function declaration and it comes after the usage of the function. And uh, RunJS is complaining over here, um, but in, in real life, in like a node script or a script in the browser, you wouldn't get this error. Node.js is happily running the function that we've defined. Multiply by three with six gives us 18. And effectively, JavaScript is going to rewrite your source file to put the declaration at the top like this, so that by the time you use it, it's already been defined. That works with function declarations. With function expressions though, it doesn't work. This one will not get hoisted, and JavaScript will not know what you're talking about when you try to invoke multiply by three. The error we get is a reference error cannot access multiply by three before initialization. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, I usually prefer function expressions over declarations because I like, when I'm reading the code, I like to see the things have been declared before I try to use them. That's just the way my brain works. There's one more style for defining functions that we'll talk about today, and that is the fat arrow function. The fat arrow function is a relatively new addition to JavaScript, and it's kind of a shorthand on the function expression. It looks like this. You'll notice there is no word function. We just have the parameter and then an equal sign and a greater than sign stuck together. This is the fat arrow. And then the function body here. Um, not having to type the word function saves us a few keystrokes and that's nice. But the fat arrow function has a couple more rules that we can take advantage of to save even more keystrokes. If you only have one parameter, you can skip the parentheses and if your function body is only one expression and you want the value of that expression returned, you can skip the curly braces too. So here's multiply by five, the number without parentheses. And then we, instead of curly braces in return, we just say number times five. This is going to be evaluated and the result will be returned. They are invoked the same way, multiply by four, three times four is 12 and then multiply by five. Three times five, of course, is 15 because math is math. And this is called the implicit return syntax. Now, I think the hardest thing about learning a new language is getting a handle on the syntax. 
You may have an idea in your head of what a function is and what a function does, especially if you're coming from a different language, but connecting that to the way it's represented in the language, in the code, is a little more difficult, especially when the language has three or more ways of defining what a function is. So it might take some time and it might take some practice, but just expose yourself to these different ways of defining a function and they will all start to make sense eventually. All right, now let's get to the good stuff. One of the reasons I like the function expression and the fat arrow is that it highlights an important feature of JavaScript functions and that is that functions are values. And you can see here, we're declaring a function, sure, but we're assigning it to a constant. The nerd term for this language feature is first class function, meaning that a function is a first class citizen, just like a number or a string or anything else. That means you can pass it in as parameters to other functions and it can be returned as a value from a function. Now, not all languages do this. And if JavaScript is your first language, you're going to learn this and take it for granted. And then you're going to learn another language that doesn't let you do that. And then you'll feel like your arm's been cut off because there's this tool in your belt that you can't use. And that will be sad, but it will be okay. You'll get through it. I believe in you. Okay, but we're in JavaScript today. So let's exploit this feature. And we'll do that by pretending we're bakers. And we wanna make some functions that bake cakes and cookies. And I went ahead beforehand and, and baked up these functions already. And here they are. We have make cake and make cookies. To make a cake, we gather the ingredients. We're going to gather the cake ingredients. We'll preheat the oven, mix the wet things, mix the dry things separately because that's what you do when you bake. And then you mix all of the things together. We're gonna to put it in a cake pan and then slide that in the oven and let it bake for 23 minutes. The cookies, on the other hand, we're going to gather the ingredients, but this time the cookie ingredients. We'll preheat the oven, mix the wet things, mix the dry things, combine all the things, and then we'll put them on a cookie sheet and bake in the oven for 14 minutes. Now, one of the skills you develop as a programmer is a keen eye for repetition. In fact, one of our closely held principles is the dry principle. Dry meaning don't repeat yourself. We don't like repetition because if we can get rid of repetition, that means there is less code that we have to write and maintain, and there's just less stuff that can go wrong. So when we see repetition, we try to get rid of it. And looking at these functions here, there is a lot of repetition going on. That is a clue that we can abstract. Right now we have two functions that are pretty concrete. One deals with cake and one deals with cookies. Let's make a function that is more general, that knows how to make more than just one thing. To do that, we'll look at these two functions, we'll identify what is common and gather all of that stuff together. And then we'll identify what is different and make those parameters to our more abstract function. We'll call it bake stuff. First thing we need to do is gather the ingredients and the ingredients that we gather are gonna be different depending if we're making a cake or a cookie. So uh, that needs to be abstracted. We'll add a parameter. We'll call it ingredients. And we'll make sure we spell it the same everywhere. The next few steps are pretty much the same in either case. So I'm gonna cheat and copy and paste those. And then the next step, getting it ready to go in the oven is gonna be different between the two. So this also needs to be parameterized. We'll call it put in container, and then we'll call it. That'll allow us to pass in the instructions about whether we put it on a cookie sheet or in a cake pan or anything else for that matter. And then finally, bake in oven for minutes. We'll bake it for, oh, this is different between the two. So we need another parameter. We'll call it cook time. We'll pass that in there. This is our abstracted or more generic function. To bake a cake, all we have to do is say, bake stuff with cake ingredients. We will, uh, when it's ready to go in the oven, we need to put it in a cake pan and it bakes for 23 minutes. When we make cookies, we wanna bake stuff with cookie 
ingredients we're going to put on a cookie sheet and bake it for 14 minutes. And of course, not everything here is defined, so uh, JavaScript has given us some errors. But that's fine, because this is just pseudocode and I don't care. We've managed to abstract not only the ingredients and the cook time, which is just values that we might already be familiar with, we've also abstracted some instructions, some functionality in the form of this put in container parameter. Now notice really quick that when we passed in that function, the put in cake pan function, we didn't put parentheses on it because we're not trying to invoke it yet. We're only referencing it yet. It will be the job of the bake stuff function to invoke it. If we were to put parentheses here, JavaScript would not complain, but what we would end up passing in is the return value of that function not a reference to the function itself. The ability to pass in functions like this is really powerful and opens up all kinds of possibilities for abstraction. First class functions are an integral part of all kinds of JavaScript programming. You use them wherever you use JavaScript. In the browser, we have to deal with events a lot. And that's something like when a user clicks on a button, we need to tell the browser what to do when that happens, that's an event. So we have an event handler that we give a function to, and the function is the instructions that the browser will execute when the button gets clicked. Sometimes we ask a JavaScript program to do something that's going to take a while, and we want to be notified when it's done. In those cases, we call the function that does the thing that's going to take a while, and we also provide a function called a callback function that will be called when it's done. It's a way to give a function a way to call us back. That's why it's called a callback. It just kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Now, I'm sure you'd like to see some examples of this first class function callback wizardry, and you will, but not yet. At least not here. You're totally free to Google JavaScript callback function example and drown yourself in callback function tutorials from anywhere on the internet. It's up to you. I'm not the boss of you. I'm just some guy on YouTube. You, you can't let me control your life. Instead, to wrap up this video, I'm going to show you something that most teachers probably wouldn't show you or even mention for a while because they think it's too advanced. But I'm not most teachers, and I think a little brain bending is good for your education. Remember that a function is a value? Of course you do, because I've said it a hundred times, but it's important. Because it's a value, we can pass it into functions as a parameter, and it can also be returned from functions as a value. Let's look at one more piece of code. Here we have just a few lines, but you're probably looking at it wondering what in the world is going on here. We, uh, we can obviously call get adder, so it's a function, and we give it a two, and we get something back, but then down here we're calling that again. So add two is also a function that we're gonna give eight to, and if you had to guess, you could probably guess that the result of add two with eight is gonna be 10. And then we do the same thing with add four, but what in the world is this up here? Let's we'll step through this. Maybe I'll expand the syntax a little bit using the regular old function expression, and hopefully it'll make more sense. This is the same thing as before, but it's maybe a little more readable. Get adder is a function that takes a parameter left side and returns a function that takes a parameter right side that returns the sum of left side and right side. So when we call get adder with the value two, left side is going to be two. And when this function gets returned, its left side will be two. So all we have to do is call it with another parameter for right side, and then we're gonna add those two numbers together, right? Add two is a function that takes a parameter, adds two to it, and returns the result. And add four does a similar thing. So what we're doing here is making new functions on the fly that do different things, and that's kind of cool. But that's not all. Remember that I said once that when you invoke a function, it essentially becomes the value that the function returns. So get adder obviously returns a function. But because this becomes a function, we can actually just turn right back around and invoke it, add another set of parentheses on it with another parameter. And then we get 10 plus six is 16. You might have to chew on that a bit.
but it's cool. JavaScript functions are amazing. They're incredibly useful and you will use them all the time. If you take the time and invest the effort to learn how to think in terms of functions, your life will never be the same again. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. You'll see me in the next one. Ciao.